there in the article just presented more possibilities of this, and I really have to thank you for doing that. My, my background, it, I'm a mechanical engineer. I started out as a Trans Am crew chief right after graduation. I ran a corporation research lab. Then I went to the dark side and worked for a defense contractor. And about 20 years ago or so, I've been messing with this. I started out with thinking about board controls. Was racing PHRF in the 90s, and I noticed that although boats were in the same basic class or, or um, speed potential, depending on what the boat looked like, they operated differently in different conditions. And then one night I was watching a race on television, and I saw Ultimate 30s. And I said, hmm, looks like if you have a boat like that, if you hung a hull under it, you could change the shape on it. So I built a model of a, a brick chance design boat, an A-scale model. I pushed and pulled it at the gunnels, measured it with a cord and measuring machine, gave it to Pete Smith and Hunt at Hinkley. Peter ran a whole gamut of, of uh, polars for it. And then with that, I said, mm, I think I got something here. And so I started to think about designing the boat. And I used the laser as a baseline because it's a great boat to use to compare against. But the deal was, I couldn't find any information on bending composites a lot. Everybody was making things so they wouldn't move. And so uh, my, first, my first design actually um, used all laser components. Here's, here's the operation of, of this boat. I'm just releasing a line on it. There's a line on both sides of the boat for the, for the operator, the, the sailor. He can pull the line or release it based on what he wants to do with the wind and, and, and the wave conditions. Um, Here's uh, Kirk Talby. Kirk was on the U.S. sailing team uh, several years ago. He sailed, this is the first version of the Morph. This had all laser components except you could change the hull on it. And he almost made, he, he was on the U.S. sailing team for laser. And when he got done, he said, Charlie, I knew what you were doing. But he said, when I sailed this boat, I had no idea what it would feel like. And he said it was like sailing all kinds of different boats. So getting into the small boat market was, was tough. And so we said, let's do some market research. And we said, oh, paddle boards are meant. Why don't I build a paddle board? Well, I had to educate myself about them. And paddle boards are all over the map. And, and it's sort of surfer dude territory. And it's a really tough thing to get into. So we took a real engineering approach at doing this. I built scale models, did large deflection FEA and FL analysis. We did computer shaping to, to get the shape we want. We used uh, FEA analysis to try to discover what the deformation on the hull was like. Evaluated different <coughs> ways to do this. And then we came up with a pretty complicated composite. It's, it's a uniaxial carbon Kevlar 29 and an, an epoxy that Joe helped me get. So um, it was a struggle building this thing. I thought it was simple because there was nothing there, but the thing was really a bugger to get. We achieved what we wanted. We got the thing to change rocker. We got it to change hull shape and beam width. And, and so th this little video sh is how I operate this. This is a handheld screwdriver. When you, run, when you run the thing down, the thing changes shape. And if you want to reverse it. And long term goal, if I were to do this, would be to have a little battery power drive in the hull and a Bluetooth control in the paddle so you didn't have to really do anything with it other than uh, so we had a lot of fun doing static, um, hi uh, hydrostatic tests in a pool. And because you have to do a lot of iterations to do it with a computer, measure them all, put them in. So we said, why don't we just put weights in a pool? I used my cell phone uh, level to do it. We had several riders ride it. And what's interesting about these things is that it's really tough to measure what's going on. It's, it's, there's a lot of seat of the pants. So anyway, through the University of Buffalo, uh, they have, have a group that tries to help small businesses, especially when they're concerned with energy and the environment. We had talked to FAR before about pedal boards because they were doing something there. We contacted them and we got, a, we got a grant and contract. I put money in it also. And it was to do uh, an adjustable deaderized boat. We picked the rib because a rib was a sensible thing to do. It has a large mission profile. It has short freeboard, flexible sides, and so basically, we, we said if we could if we could do a, a well anyway we evaluated all these things speed fuel consumption vertical acceleration static stability and so forth so magically this boat was supposed to have a hinge along the keel line and you start out with the boat at five degrees 
and you pull some magic and you fold the boat up until it got up to 35 degrees. And I went from 5 to 35 degrees because they're both sort of at the outer end of, of the spectrum. You know, normally you don't see boats that are like this. So anyway, the results, we got far to do this, and, and the results were quite interesting. Um, they, and probably the, the max speed wasn't as, it didn't come out as good as we wanted. It was probably because of the wetted area. We, we just made the boat, uh, I'm going to skip that. What was really important was at moderate speeds, like 34 knots, there's a big difference in fuel consumption. And the other thing was that in waves, obviously the deep, the deep V boat was better. So look, at, when you do a new design, any new design has cost risk benefits, right? You make the thing too heavy, it doesn't work. You, you end up putting things in that may take you right out of the market because of the money. There's complexities you have to do. I actually had a quick mass rake system on the boat. But one of the things that gives me uh, confidence that this could go someplace is the large uh, manufacturers like auto automobile and aircraft, like Mercedes has a, ex they extend the length of the car to save air for aerodynamics at high speed. And, and the aircraft industry has been doing um, swept wing to go supersonic for a long time. So people do that. So, um, we, we showed, a, I mean, I showed you a bunch of examples that, that I've looked at. You might, you might think of some others. Um, and I haven't messed with the simplest one yet, which I may do soon, because the canoe's a natural to do this. But another you might really think of, especially if you're a racer, and I, I'm actually a racer at heart, is that everybody's foiling everything. Foils have a, 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 a bandwidth where they work well. And well, I would work hard at trying to get my foils to morph so that I could increase the, the range without having to change it. Get out on the race course and, and, and go, oh my god, I picked the wrong foil for today or something, right? Well, hopefully I've showed you some advantages of, of morphine. Um, I think it warrants further exploration. I'm not really a naval architect, you know that, but I, I work hard at it. You might want to have a business case to do it, which is tough. You might have some discretionary funds, and I hope this sparks some interest in you to talk to us about it.